Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the shop. Well, today's project, I have a friend who wants to mount some Lionel trains on a shelf at his house. And he wants one long shelf, 42 inches long, and a short one, 20 inches long. Well, you might want something like this for your train room. If that's the case, why don't you join me and we'll build these together. Hope you can stay tuned. So this is the size, relative size, of these um, three rail locomotives. There's a little piece of track. This happens to be my uh, steam locomotive that I had ever since, well I don't know, I was eight years old, something like that. Anyway, he would like two shelves, a kind of a long one and a short one, one 42 inches long and the other 20 inches. And I'm not so sure what sort of a stain he's going to put on there, he will handle all that at his house so that it can match what he already has. So we're going to make the wooden part of the shelf and then he will go ahead and mount the track and do the staining and get everything all set up. But it would be easier for me to make the wood part for him and uh, he's an excellent machinist. But this is something I can do to kind of pay back for some favors he's done for me. Joe's helped me a great deal on my plans to get a railroad here at the house so this is the least I can do is to help him by building a couple of shelves for him so I'm going to make the shelves out of poplar I got a couple of pieces of poplar and they need to be five inches or so deep and one of them is 42 inches and the other is 20 so that's plenty of length so that he can find a couple of studs in the wall if he wants to screw the shelves directly into the wall for greater support. These Lionel engines, they are not light. This is metal cast and it's, it's heavy. So you want to make sure that it's really into the wall. So the first thing we're going to do, I've got a couple of pieces of poplar that I picked up and I'm going to go ahead and do a rough sanding just to bring it into rough shape, rough smoothness. So let's do that first. So we have two pieces of poplar here. I'm going to cut them at the chop saw to make them easier to handle when we sand them down. So one shelf needs to be 42, so I'm gonna make a cut at 43, giving us a little room to trim on the ends, and it will be easier to handle the materials when they're not six foot long. So let's go do that right now. Right here at uh, 43, that's where we will cut these off. Okay, just a little bit of rough sanding. Next thing is I want to mill the edges on these so that I know they're nick-free and straight and true. So I'll take a little bit off each edge here on the table saw. So here's how the shelves will look. There'll be a, a backer piece like this that goes against the wall. And then this shelf will attach like this. So let me display it here. So I want to cut these to length, but I'm going to, if you can see the edge here, I'm not going to cut them the back piece flush. I'm going to inset it just a little bit like that. So this I will cut to 20. And then this I'll take maybe a half an inch off each side. So we'll cut this at 20 inches and 19. This will be 42. And then the bottom piece will be 41. So let's go to the chop saw and get that done. Okay, 
Okay, we have our pieces basically cut to length. You can see a little bit of inset here on either side. Now, we have to finalize which is the face upside on these and which will be the front. Make that decision. And then my friend would like a little bit of a figure on the front edge of these top panels, this top one and this top one. So I'm going to use a Roman OG bit, put it in the router, and then go around three sides. So that'll be our next step. So I have the bit set in here, but I have the plate down quite far. We're going to do this in multiple light passes. We don't want to chew this wood all up. Okay, here's the top, here's the back. One down, one to go. Okay, for the next step, my friend wanted this top shelf pretty wide. This is the part that will go against the wall, and here's the top. And to my eye, it looks a little unsupported. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two scraps that we had left over, and I'm gonna make a couple of small little bracing supports that will add just a bit of leverage and also will make a nice look and make it look a little stronger. So let's get busy on that. So we'll mimic the little OG pattern on here and this will be the corner brace and you can see I put just a little gentle curve in that. So we'll cut this one out and then I'll use that as a template. I'll make three of them I think for the big shelf and two of them for the small shelf. Well, you can see in the end, I decided to make four supports for the long shelf and two for the short. Got to do some hand sanding at this point. So let's get busy. Alright, well, I've gone over everything with a little bit of sandpaper, a couple of different grits, and now it's time to take the back, which will be attached to the wall, and add the top to it. So what I'm going to do is put some pocket screw holes along the back, and then we'll screw it and glue it to the top. Okay, so we have our pocket holes, which you can see on the back. The exact position of these 
doesn't really matter, except that I want to account for a couple of different things. I want to make sure that wherever these supports are, I don't have a pocket hole screw. And these I measured out to make sure that I've got a 16 inch span. That's the standard width of the support studs in a common wall. And I want to make sure that when Joe puts this in his house, that if he wants to, he can always find a couple of studs, especially on this long one. So I'm going to put two screws into the back of each of these supports, and it'll be glued on the top, but screwed and glued to this backer board. So let's measure out where these are going to go on the other side, and we'll drill a couple of pilot holes for each of these supports. So I got these screwed in here, but now that I know it's fitting properly, I'll pull the screws out and add a little bit of tight bond glue and these will be on here permanently. I won't be screwing them into the top for obvious reasons, but I will dress a little bit of glue here once I get the top in place. Now, take a look at where these meet. You really want a good joint here, smooth here, so that there's not a big gap. But if there is a slight gap, if these are a little bit tall, don't get after it with a sander because you'll ruin this flat edge on here that we created with the table saw. Instead, take your hand plane and just, just gently dress that with the hand plane if you need to. Alrighty, I'm going to glue these up and then I'm going to put the supports on the big long piece. See you in a minute. Well, I think the glue's probably set up enough that I can take the clamps off. Well, here's the short shelf. So this will mount on the wall. Joe's trains will sit on top. Not sure what sort of a finish he's going to do on here. Probably a stain finish. And uh, just in case he wants to drill some holes in here and plug them up, I'm going to give him a few of these little plugs. He can match the stain on these. Well, listen, I hope it was interesting for you to follow my build on this project. I'm going to take off. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to leave a comment below if you got an extra minute. See you later.